Hello, my name's Kingsley Singleton, Deputy Editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this Photoshop and Elements video lesson. Straight out of the camera, all digital images need a little sharpening, and this is especially true if you've shot in RAW mode where there's no in-camera sharpening applied to your pictures. That means you need to add sharpness in Photoshop or Elements, and of course there are many ways of doing this but one of the best and easiest to use isn't found within uh, the regular spot under the filter menu and down to sharpen. It's actually all the way down at the bottom of the filter menu and it's called high pass. High pass sharpening increases the perception of sharpness in the same way as the more commonly used unsharp mask filter. It increases contrast along the edges within your picture to make them look a little bit clearer and more defined but due to the way the high pass filter is applied, it's a lot more controllable. And this is what really makes it the connoisseur's choice. Take a look at our example picture and you'll see how it works. Here above the background layer in the layers palette, we have our high pass sharpening layer. And if I zoom in a little on the picture, you can see how the sharpness has been applied. Just turning off the layer, we get uh, a much more fuzzy picture, particularly down here in the foreground, but turning it back on again, it's really nice and clear. Up here at the top of the lighthouse, you can also see we've had a really nice effect, just making those details seem all the more crisp and clear. But the most important thing is that because of the way the high pass filter is applied, we've been able to hold back the sharpening in different areas of the picture. You see, you can't apply high pass sharpening to a picture with a single background layer. You have to copy the original picture to a new layer, apply the effect, and then blend the results using layers. If this sounds unnecessarily complicated, don't be fooled. It's actually how the sharpness is added that makes it more controllable. Because by keeping the effect on a separate layer, it can be fine-tuned to suit any part of the image. So if you have a look at the attached layer mask here that's uh, alongside our high-pass layer, you can see that while the full effect of the high pass filter is being applied in the foreground, up here in the sky, we've held the effect back by painting black into the mask. And we've also done something similar on the lighthouse itself, which was already sort of fairly sharp in the picture. We've just painted uh, a little sort of mid-tone gray into our layer mask there, just to hold back the effect slightly. You'll find this really useful, especially uh, in a picture like this, where you've got large areas of nice flat blue sky that you don't want to be sharpening and therefore showing off any unwanted digital noise. Another advantage to having our sharpening effect on a separate layer is that we can change its uh, blending mode. At the moment it's set to overlay, but if we click here and set it to soft light, we get a slightly reduced effect. And if we change it to linear light, we get a more pronounced effect. And of course we can also play with the uh, layer opacity, just knocking that back to diminish the effect even further. And all of these things add up to make high pass sharpening the most adaptable way to improve the clarity of your images. Okay, let's see how it's done just by closing down our uh, example image here, and then we'll bring up the shot called uh, lighthouse.jpg, which we'll find on this month's CD. And as I said in the intro, if we just sort of zoom in on the picture, you can see that um, it's not bad. It's certainly not soft in any particular way, but because of the uh, the very small f16 aperture that was used at the time of shooting, though we've got a, a nice large depth of field in the image, it's not quite as sharp as it could be. Now the first thing we need to do is bring up our layers palette. So if you haven't got yours open, just come up to window and down to layers, and it'll pop on screen. And once that's on there, the next step is to duplicate our background layer. Basically, make a copy of the original photo within the layers palette. Now there are lots of ways you can do this, but the easiest is just to click and drag the background layer into the new layer icon. Immediately then you'll get background copy within the layers palette. This is where our high pass filter is going to be applied. But before we add the filter, we need to change the layers blending mode. To do this, just come up to where it says normal in the layers palette, click on that downward facing arrow, and then choose the option called overlay from the list. Now as soon as you do that, the image will get very contrasty. Don't worry, it's not going to end up like this, because as soon as we come up to Filter, down to Other, and pick High Pass, all those harsh colours and deep contrast will disappear. Now within the High Pass dialog box, much like the uh, Unsharp Mask dialog, we get a small preview window. Click and drag this uh, onto 
an area of the image where there's some detail and we can get started on seeing how it's applied. And also just make sure that the preview box is ticked and then we'll be able to see uh, all of the effects on the uh, actual photo that we're working on. We'll also just zoom in a little bit I think and match up our view here and that way we'll be getting a real-time view of how the sharpness is being applied to the picture. Now because the high pass filter is all about adding sharpness in a, a really nice and kind of natural way what we don't want to see in here is too much image detail. That means our radius is too high and the sharpness that's going to be added is too severe. Click and drag your radius slider therefore down to, uh, we'll stick it on about four pixels to start with. And what we want to be seeing is some nice areas of smooth flat gray. Anything that looks gray within this preview won't be sharpened. And therefore it's really useful for avoiding sharpening any areas like the sky here that we want to remain nice and smooth. All we want to do really is pick out the details in our lighthouse and our foreground. We don't want any uh, sharpness applied to the clouds or the blue sky or particularly any of the digital noise that's in the picture. So I think this part of the image is kind of uh, looking pretty good. What I'm going to do though is just hold down the spacebar and click and drag our picture down to the foreground where I think to be honest we could probably be a little bit more aggressive in our sharpening just to pick out those nice grasses a little bit better. That's going to have a slightly unwanted effect on our lighthouse though but don't worry as I said in the introduction we'll be able to hold back the effect where we don't want it using either a layer mask or the eraser tool. So what I'm going to do on those grass areas is just um, push that radius up a little higher to about four and a half or five pixels and that's starting to produce the kind of sharpness that I'm after but um, before we actually click OK and leave the high pass dialog here it's just worth having another quick look at our image here within the dialog box because that's going to illustrate in quite a nice way exactly how that sharpness is being applied to the picture. All of these edges that you can see within the preview here are contributing to the sharpening effect. Essentially, looking at the, uh, the side of the lighthouse here, we're making the pixels on one side of this line lighter and those on the other side a little bit darker. And this increase in local contrast gives the impression of sharpness that we desire. And it all adds up to a clearer and a more well-defined picture. So uh, I think it's time to click OK and exit the high pass dialog there. And then we can come back to a full view on our example picture and just by clicking on and off the eye icon next to uh, the background copy layer there you can see how our sharpening has been applied. We've managed to build up some really nice texture down here at the bottom of the image just showing off all of those nice grasses but up here towards the lighthouse things are probably looking a little bit too severe. We're getting some uh, sort of mild halos in there along the coastline and so that's where we're going to have a go at holding back the effect. Also up here in the clouds they've probably become a little bit too sharp too so we'll reduce the severity of the uh, the high pass effect there and uh, what we're going to do is add a layer mask to the layer just to effectively hide from view those areas that we don't want to see. Now traditionally layer masks are only available in the full version of Photoshop so if you're using an older version of Elements just sit tight for a moment and I'll show you a workaround solution once we've had a quick look at the layer masks. So to add the uh, layer mask, what we're going to do is click on the add layer mask icon down here at the foot of the layers palette. As soon as you do that, a white rectangle will appear next to the background copy layer. And then to hide any uh, parts of the sharpening effect that we don't want to see, we just select the brush tool. We make sure that black is set as our foreground color here at the foot of the toolbox. And then we just uh, paint across the mask and you can see the black appearing there within it. Don't worry, we'll just sweep right across the lighthouse for now. And by painting black over the whole top part of the picture, we just hold back the sharpening effect there and we localize it to the foreground. So if I just zoom back in again now, you can see that by clicking on and off that layer visibility icon again, it becomes sharp down the bottom of the picture, but up on the lighthouse, we're not really having uh, any effect at all. We do want to uh, put a little bit of extra sharpness in there though, but the most important thing is we've held it off the clouds here. We don't want any uh, extra sharpness there. The way that we're going to reintroduce 
the sharpness to the lighthouse is simply by painting white into our mask to bring it back in those areas. So we'll click back on this icon here within our toolbox just to swap our foreground and background colours over. Then we'll just drop our brush size a little bit down to about 300 pixels in this case. And then finally before we start painting just drop that brush opacity down to about 20 or 30% and then just zooming out a touch so we can see the whole of our lighthouse. We'll just paint a couple of times over its surface just to bring back a little bit of that extra sharpness there. So you can see that just by painting black or white or shades of grey into the layer mask that's attached to the high pass sharpening layer you can have a, a huge amount of control over where it sits within the image. It's a really adaptable and useful way to apply sharpness to your pictures. But as I said, traditionally there aren't any uh, layer masks within Photoshop Elements, so uh, to make sure users of that program know how it's done, we're just going to use the Eraser tool. So I'll just uh, first click and drag our layer mask into the uh, waste bin. Make sure that we just delete that mask instead of applying it. The sharpness reappears within the picture, and then what we're going to do is just select the Eraser tool, bring that brush size up, a bit like we did with the brush tool for the layer mask, to about 500 pixels. Make sure it's got a nice uh, soft edge, and then we'll just, this time, be a little more careful, and we'll erase those parts of the high pass layer that we don't want to see. So just making sure that we don't erase over the lighthouse itself, we can get a very similar effect. And there, on the high pass layer in the layers palette, you'll see the checkerboard effect appearing, and that's showing me exactly where I've erased the pixels and held back the effect. And then just like the brush on a layer mask, I can drop the opacity of the eraser tool. And over the lighthouse itself, just sweep over it a couple of times so that we subtly knock back the effect in that area, but we don't get rid of it completely. So there, very quickly, we'll just turn off and on our layer visibility icon again, and you can see that we're having a nice sharpening effect on the foreground. We're applying a little less sharpening to the lighthouse, and we're applying no sharpness to the uh, blue areas of the sky, and particularly those cloud edges within it. And of course, as I said uh, in the introduction, we can further refine our sharpening effect by changing the blending mode to uh, something like soft light to make the uh, effect less contrasty, just holding it back even further, or we can use hard light to make it more severe, or linear light to really kind of power it on. I'm quite happy with uh, the overlay setting that we had there though. Okay, so that's our extra sharpness added to the picture, and the really great thing is that because it's on a separate layer, if we don't like it, we can go back to our original picture nice and easy. I'm happy with it though, so what I'm going to do is come up to layer, and down to flatten image. And then I'm going to make sure that I save my image under a new file name. So come up to file, down to save as, and what we'll do is we'll call this one Lighthouse Sharp, and we'll click save. Just choose a quality level of uh, 10 or upwards when prompted, and hit OK. And this is uh, quite a good habit to get into because it's always an excellent idea to keep an unedited version of your image so that you can go back to it in its purest form and edit it in a different way if you desire. But that's our high pass sharpening effect completed. Give it a go with uh, lighthouse.jpg which is on the CD, but uh, make sure you try it out in your own pictures too, because you certainly will see a great advantage to sharpening your pictures in this way. Okay, hope you found that useful, and I'll see you next time.